Good evening. In our service now. Um, let's have a word of prayer before we start. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Tonight's service is called tenebrae, and that's a Latin word that means shadow or darkness. So it's not a happy service, it's a dark service, and it's, it's actually, if you had to liken it to something, it would be a funeral service. In fact, this unusual candelabra here is called a hearse, which of course is associated with funerals as well. Um, it's commemorating the death of Jesus, and the focus tonight will be on the cross. The purpose is for us to recreate the betrayal and the abandonment, the agony of the events that all led towards the cross, and the service itself is left unfinished because the story isn't over until Easter Day. Tonight we're going to begin with confession, and if you would like to get a kneeling cushion, this would be a good time to do it. Um, you don't have to have one. You'll stay seated or kneeling. We'll, um, we'll enter into confession, which is appropriate because it's our sin which led Jesus to the cross, which was the whole reason he had to die for us. And we'll enter into those shadows with him. And have a series of seven readings. And after each reading, there'll be a brief prayer. And after that, two of the candles will be extinguished. So as, as we move along in the story, as we move along closer to the cross with Jesus, we'll enter into the darkness with him. The lights will be getting dimmer and dimmer. And interspersed throughout those readings will be a few songs, too. All the words are there in your booklet. Um, by the time we get to the end, all of the candles will be out, all of the lights will be turned out, and I'll even extinguish the Christ candle because we know that Jesus did die and for three days was in the tomb. Now, Matthew's Gospel tells us that the moment Jesus died, the temple curtain was ripped in two from top to bottom. And it also says that the earth shook and the ground opened and some of the graves gave up their dead. So to help us experience the climatic moment of that amazing event, we're going to have a really loud noise then. I'm just telling you now so there won't be... I mean, it's supposed to be jarring, but I'm giving you a warning so that nobody has a weak ticker and you have to worry about that. So after after this after this total silence, oh, total darkness and the loud noise, we're going to sit in silence for a minute or so, and just feel that darkness. And then I'll relight the Christ candle, because as Christians we never mourn without hope. We always have the hope of the resurrection, and we know the end of the story, which we'll be celebrating on Sunday. So after I relight the Christ candle, I'll I'll leave, and the rest of you. Invited to leave as well. And again, like last night, we'll leave in silence. So, let us begin. <clears throat> Minds to see ourselves as you see us and from an unwillingness to know our weakness and our sin. Lord, Lord us. From selfishness, from wishing to be the center of attention, from the desire to have our own way in all things, from unwillingness to listen to others, from resentment of criticism, Lord, Lord, us. from love of power, from jealousy, from taking pleasure in the weakness of others, from gossip and backbiting. Lord, deliver us. From the weakness of indecision, from fear of adventure, from constant fear of what others think of us, from fear of speaking what we know is true and doing what we know right. Lord, deliver us. From from possessiveness about material things and people, from carelessness about the needs of others, from selfish use of time and money, 
and from all lack of generosity. Lord, hear us. From laziness of conscience, from lack of self-discipline, from failure to persevere, from wallowing in regret and disappointment. Lord, hear us. From failure to be truthful, from pretense and acting apart, from hypocrisy, from all dishonesty with ourselves and with others. Lord, hear us. From impurity in word and thought and in action, from failure to respect the bodies and minds of ourselves and others, from any kind of addiction. Lord, hear us. From hatred and anger, from sarcasm, from lack of sensitivity to others, from all failure to love and to forgive. Lord, hear us. From failure to see our sin as an affront to God, from failure to accept the forgiveness he offers. Lord, hear us. May the Almighty God have mercy on you, forgiving your sins and bringing you to everlasting life. Amen. May remain seated for the reading of the psalm, Psalm 40, which we will read responsibly. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard me my cry. He He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you plan for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is, it is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is written in my heart. I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness and your gracious Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. Your troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord, and I'm waiting for the Lord to help me. May all who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who save me, ha, ha, be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in May those who long for your saving help always say, The Lord is great. And as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord be with me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God and do not delay. Let us pray for the Holy Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity and witness and service for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for Neo, our bishop, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Lord, hear our prayer.
26, 17 through 25. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, My teacher says, My appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad, and began to say to him one after another, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of God, the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. Let us pray. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow the example of love and service. Lord, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus prayed for those who were to believe through their message. We pray for the mission of the church. Lord, hear our prayer. On this night, Jesus commanded them to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejection and unloved. Lord, hear our prayer. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for just one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he found them again sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his, the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body and in mind. For the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed. For the sick, the wounded, and the crippled. For those in loneliness, fear, and anguish. For those who face, face temptation, doubt, and despair. For the sorrowful and bereaved. For prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger. 
that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them, and grant them the knowledge of his love, and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions, and give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
reading from Luke. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man, who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading him. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priest, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. Let us pray. Dearest Lord Jesus, delivered into the hands of the wicked by a kiss, bound like a robber, and abandoned by your disciples, have mercy on us, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dearest Lord Jesus, condemned to death by an unjust counsel, taken as an evildoer before Pilate, and ridiculed by the wicked Herod, have mercy on us. reading is from Luke 22, 54 through 62. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman. I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow is with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. <coughs> Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned right at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ. For those who have never heard the word of salvation. For those who have lost their faith. For those hardened by sin or indifference. For the contemptuous and the scornful. For those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples. For those who, in the name of Christ, have persecuted others. That God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God. Creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock and one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply. And Pilate was amazed. Now, it was a custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Lord, when you were misunderstood, you silently forgave. But we so often respond in anger. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you gave us opportunity to choose Jesus, but for so long we have chosen the rebellion that demanded your death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 23, beginning at verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also let out of him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The other people stood watching, <coughs> and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine and vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you were under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our, our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, where the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his life. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray to you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God.